crowd, team, everything, obviously, in the pursuit of NCAA tournament, which we all are. You know, they, you know, this is a huge game for them. And when a team responds when they need a huge game like that, even though we're playing against them, it's, it's a neat thing to watch. You know, all their kids were, were locked in were locked in, and they were certainly locked in against us. Their defense was outstanding, and their pursuit of the ball was uh, even better. You know, they doubled up us on rebounds, and, you know, again, they they were superb. And, you know, I'm not sure if we – thank you. I'm not sure if we were – we were out of character. That's what I'll say. We've been through a long month – where our kids have just played their butts off. Oh, I mean, they just played their butts off and, and have won amazing games. We did not play our butts off today. We were out, you know, now the team we played against did. And, uh, and just an out of character game. But uh, you play a long season like this and you, put, you're, you're, you go through a bunch of stuff. Every once in a while, you, thank goodness it's been once in a while. You know, uh, we just didn't play well. And they made us not play well, too. When I'm saying that, we might have played great tonight and, and not beaten them. So, look, I'm not one to discredit a superb performance. I, I, that pit team was terrific today. And uh, for Robinson to end his home career, you know, what a great representative he's been for your program and for this city and for himself, he and his family, you know, to – just in command of the game, you know, just a, a superb leader on the court. And, yeah, again, my, uh, congratulations to him. And we, we need to move on. This schedule's tough. You know, you go from Sunday, rather Saturday, Monday, to Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday, to it's crazy. And we all <laughs> – it's nuts for all these kids. So uh, we got to get back on the horse and ride it the proper way on Tuesday night. But uh, any questions you all might have? Do you just try to flush this game as quickly as can't be mad? Yeah, you know, well, we saw – look, I'm coaching so damn long. You, 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 you're always in anticipation of something like that. I saw it in the middle of the second half against Florida State. Our, our faces were drained. And our home crowd and – yeah, you know, we have good character on our team. We were able to fight through it. We, we it just like we could not muster up anything today, and I was not able to help them do that. And so we just got to put it behind us and hats off and salute Pitt and get ready for Tuesday. Does that factor in the, the offensive rebound, the rebounding edge Pitt had? Was yeah, no, it factors into everything, Steve. I mean, you know, like they're, you know, is hungry, not hungry. Okay, which team would you? Pitt, Duke. You know, we were not. They were really hungry, and we today we were not. Yeah, but look, I like my. I love my team. I didn't love the way we competed today, but uh, that's not. Our guys have done a great job this year. That was an out of character game for them. Aside from being as locked in as you mentioned before and the hunger level that you just addressed, was there anything tactically or any specific player that you saw emerge tonight or something that Pitt did that you hadn't seen on tape leading into the game? No, I mean, we, we think Pitt's an outstanding team and tough to score against. You know, they break you down together, not so much with the dribble and that, but they, they play so well. Not, you know, just they, I, I, I just think they did their thing. And uh, it's not, not like it was a surprise. We just couldn't stop it. You know, so they, look, they, they, they've done that to other people, too. The five-yard lineup isn't something we've really seen. Is that just kind of? Well, they, their bigs are mobile, except Maya is a, is a big. But when you have Young and these guys, <laughs> it, uh, and we knew that coming in, Marshall would have a, an unusual guy to defend. And uh, so what happens is they can post different people, and they, uh, they put you – they're not as tall as some teams like Florida State, but they're big. 
they're big everywhere. And, uh, uh, and then they have a system that uses that. So uh, that was unusual for us to defend, but it's not like we didn't expect it. We just couldn't, we couldn't stop it. How important were those uh, runs to start off the first and second half with uh, seven to 10? Well, I, you know, I don't think there's one streak here. That, look, they just outplayed us for 40 minutes. So the, there were going to be streaks where they played, outplayed us even more, and those were two of them. Yeah, I don't know how – the most important thing is that they, they played great for 40 minutes. You know. What did they do on Grayson that made him have you know, such a tough day for him? Well, I don't know he had a tough day. He had 23, 22 points. And, I mean, I, I, you know, Grayson played well offensively. Did they throw anything defensively, I guess? I'm sorry? Did they throw anything defensively that was different? Or I, I, you know, I, I didn't analyze the game, what, what they were doing against Grayson. It's what they were doing against our team. You know, if our, our guys, look, he shot 50% from the floor. He got 22 points. It, it, you know, he, he, he did okay. It's just that it wasn't, it was rebounding. That you know, you get out rebounded 39 to 20. You're probably not going to win. For you, I mean, seeing a bubble team play well on its home floor is pretty predictable. Did you think there was any like preparation issues, or just the guys just didn't have it today? No, I thought we look. We prepared the way we have to, which means you can't. We don't have contact in practice. We had to give them off on no nothing on Friday because we were dead. We had one day of practice yesterday, and it's no contact. And so, would you like to prepare differently? Yeah, but you, you know, again, we're not crying. That's just the way it is. What was your message to Grayson after the ACC discipline on Friday, like for the rest of the season? No, well, you know, we, you know, first, you know, like with that, we were proactive in that. You know, I called the ACC uh, the morning after the game and told them that I had talked to Leonard Hamilton. I. I brought after I saw the the thing, I brought Grayson in that night and talked to him and uh, uh, and I I said I told the ACC like this is what we've done. You tell us what to do, and you know in his case, look if anything was called, it would be a flagrant one. You know, and so all this suspension thing and that look, I would not suspend any player for what would be a flagrant one. If he punched somebody, look, the week, what he got was the stiffest reprimand a player has gotten in our conference this year. There have been other guys who have hit people and whatever, and there have been no reprimand. I'm not knocking our conference. I'm just saying I thought they took action. And then you got to move on. Now, the world doesn't move on because it's Duke. So we got to live with that. But uh, I thought we handled it the way we should, and, uh, and we need to move on. Mike, when you say the stiffest reprimand, what, what constitutes a stiff No, what I, I said, it was the only, has, have there been any other reprimands? I don't know. Well, you should investigate. You said it was the stiffest reprimand. And because it's the only one. I could say it's the softest reprimand. I could say it's no, it's just a reprimand that's neutral. In other words, whatever adjective you would like to use for reprimand, you can use. It's the only one. So the ACC came down and disciplined, and so be it.